Hey there, thanks for clicking this video. My name is Anthony Romano, and I'm gonna tell you why I do the ketogenic diet. I'll tell you a bit about my history. I've been doing it for seven years, and I'm a big fan of bodybuilding, doing that as well throughout that time, and basically explain to you the benefits that I feel keto has over other diets, and what made me stick to it so much. There's a lot I can say about the actual scientific benefits of keto. There's a lot of positive effects it has on your hormones. There's a lot of positive effects it has on your reliance to sugar, your addiction to sugar. Not saying you're addicted, but many people can be. And it, it, everybody can be, but a lot of people are. And there's a lot of hormonal sides of things that have been positively affected for me. My hunger is much more easy to regulate. That's initially how I got into this diet because I was looking for a fat loss diet where my hunger wasn't in the driving seat. And for me, I was the, always the type of guy where I could eat forever. <laughs> when I'm eating carbs, I can eat all the food in the world. <laughs> so for me, when I was trying to lose some weight back in high school and do an actual bodybuilding cut, I chose this diet because I Googled what's the best fat loss diet. I wanted the best results for the fat loss diet I would do. And for me, the only one that I really stuck with was keto. I eventually experimented with other diets, but keto was always the one I went back to throughout those seven years. And I got very good at it over time, learned a lot more about it, dove much more into the scientific research and scientific literature on it. So for me, that's where I'm at now. But when I first jumped into it, I actually did it pretty good. I didn't, I, I was ready to commit to, you know, no carbs. I, a lot of people have a hard time doing that. For me, I just looked up, I don't care if the diet is hard, I would just want the best fat loss diet, the most effective one. And for me, my research led me to keto. So I accepted the premises that I had to cut out the carbs and I did it and I had pretty good results. The first time I actually only did it for a few weeks um, and then I started bulking. So that was probably better because I eventually needed some muscle to then cut down and reveal. But after then I did it for like seven or eight months and I had some very good results. Maybe I'll even throw them up here somewhere. But bottom line, the thing is, that those are the early years, right? The experience of keto that I had at that time wouldn't have led me to the hormonal benefits and the lifestyle benefits that I experience now. What I know now is that my dependence on sugar and carbohydrates is much less. My dependence on food overall is a lot less because I'm typically eating one meal a day. Sometimes I'll even fast for a day. I'm routinely pushing 18 to 20 hour fast every day, which isn't necessarily something I force, it's just instinctive and the ability to fast is a sign of good metabolic health because you're not requiring food every couple hours. Somebody who was would probably have very bad insulin and very bad blood sugar and probably be overweight and obese. So in general, it, there's also these effects on your insulin, your blood sugars. A lot of people will point out the, not anecdotal, but scientific evidence on disease prevention with keto however the sample sizes are often smaller so i'm not going to call it anecdotal but there is a lot of evidence for that but that's a topic for another video in general one thing we do know is that there are benefits for just your overall health with keto a lot of the fat soluble vitamins which are very hard to get from most foods are available in high quantities on the keto diet so this is also one of the reasons why i find myself sticking to keto because it is so filling and satiating because the nutrient density of a lot of these foods. And I didn't quite realize that at first. What I eventually realized over time was that as I picked better quality foods and had experimented with different levels of fat and in my diet, as far as my macro makeup was concerned, and doing it for maintenance and lifestyle benefit and doing some bulks with it, in general, I realized that this wasn't just a short-term fix is the reason why. So. I realized that doing keto wasn't just a short-term fat fix, it was a actual benefit I felt in my life. The thing I noticed most particularly was that whenever I was doing keto, it was that I almost had this laser, not laser, but I had a very sharp focus to what I was doing. And it's almost like you get in these, these swing of things, like you get this momentum with you because when you're doing keto, you almost 
maybe it's because your dependence on food drops, maybe it's because you're not having these blood sugar spikes all the time, and there is lots of proof that keto helps you focus and your brain prefers fat as an energy source. But I always feel this momentum, and I feel that I'm able to do more and squeeze out more productivity out of my life. Whether it's because of those appetite effects that I was explaining, or through you know better insulin sensitivity, better ability to fast and not be relying on food. Either way, what I know is that whenever I stop, right, because sometimes I go on vacation in the summers, it's like my momentum just stops. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have this focus that lasts continuously. And if you're somebody who's trying to build a business or do some videos or do some side hobbies, you know, get into a side hustle, I really felt like it maximized my ability to do those things. And that's also why I'm trying to put up more videos on my YouTube. I'm a big fan of, you know, listening to books, reading lots of books as well, <laughs> listening to podcasts, seminars. I do that quite often. And my attention span is larger because maybe that's not a direct result of keto, but I know that there's no blood sugars interrupting that. No blood sugar drops interrupting that. No insulin drops forcing me to eat and interrupt that. I feel more in general independent in that sense from other things to change my state. So that's kind of one way to frame it. Um, of course, you have the benefit of you're not eating a lot of processed food, right? You're not eating, eating a lot of processed sugars. That's very beneficial on your health as well. But in general, that is the scientific and reasonable, logical rationale behind why I do keto. But in general, my experience with other diets was just never as effective in the fat loss department. It was never as effective in the lean bulk department. It was never as effective in the lifestyle and how I felt department. I mean, I've tried carb-based cuts and I always felt hungry. I always felt like I wanted more food and I can never go to sleep without being hungry. Maybe it's because I just, my body wanted more food. Maybe it's because I was more sensitive to sugars and insulins. I don't know. I really don't know what it would be, but whenever I was eating those carbs and stuff, I wanted them and I wouldn't be able to go to sleep without them. I was always going to bed hungry. I was always experiencing hunger throughout the day. I wasn't able to fast as long. So that's my experience with the fat loss side of things. With the bulk side of things, I mean, that was fun. You know, the carb-based bulks are fun. It's just that you add more fat in the meanwhile. And as you progress on those diets, you're going to decrease your insulin sensitivity, which is going to make it harder to add lean muscle and also harder to keep your body from adding fat. So that's one of the downsides of long-term carb bulking, which you don't get on keto. With the maintenance, I mean, in general, no problems. I mean, eating carbs on a regular basis is fine as long as you're getting them from healthier sources and not processed trash, right? From there, anybody can go up or down depending on how well they manage themselves, how well they avoid those things and flock towards the, the good alternatives, the healthy alternatives. So that's my rationale behind what didn't work out for me with a lot of carb-based diets. I know that focus-wise, productivity-wise, I almost feel like I have to stay keto. Most like It's not like I'm going to stop randomly because I'm not forcing myself. This is effortless for me. I just like it. I feel good. I don't want to eat carbs because I just know how good I feel. But what I'm saying is I almost feel like I have, if, if I want to do the levels, hit the levels of productivity I'm trying to hit, then I almost feel compelled that I have to stay keto because I know that when I'm on a carb metabolism, it's not going to allow me to be as powerful, I guess is one way to say it. Just even in terms of brain power, brain function, attention span, things like that. There's a lot of evidence for keto uh, reducing inflammation in the body, which if you have an inflammatory issue, that's one reason why you might want to do it. A lot of the problems that halt your focus and a lot of the problems that halt your ability to recover even physically are inflammatory and from an imbalance of inflammatory fats and and then anti-inflammatory fats. And on keto, you typically end up getting more of the anti-inflammatory fats. So in general, that is the rationale and of why I do it and also some of the science behind it. Hopefully I've married the two of those without making it too derivative in this video, but Overall, that's why I do keto, and I mean, over the years of experience, I've figured out lots of other ways to hit all the tastes. That's another thing, too, is that when I do a fat loss diet, all I care about is that I want to be able to hit the tastes 
that taste good. So if you're doing keto for fat loss, you always have an option for the sweet. You always have an option for the salty. You always have an option for, you know, the candy, like the, that type of sweet, you know? And there's always options for every type of taste. So for me, I don't care if I'm getting it from sugar or not because I'd prefer to get it not from sugar because then my metabolism isn't going to be so volatile. My focus isn't going to be so volatile. Blood sugars aren't going to be shooting up and down. Blood insulin isn't going to be shooting up and down. Fat burning is going to be more effective if you have more stable blood insulin, which is another benefit of keto. But in general, what's going to happen is when it comes to how you enjoy the diet, you're going to enjoy any diet that allows you to get the taste you want. And it's going to allow you to get the taste you want while decreasing your desire for those tastes in the first place. So what I mean by that is if you're a person who has a sweet tooth, you still have options to get sweet tasting foods and snacks that you can make. I even have a keto chocolate recipe you can check out. It's amazing. Very easy too and healthy, nutrient dense. But not only is it possible for you to hit those tastes, but you are going to be lowering your dependence on sugar and lowering your insulin resistance, so making yourself more sensitive to it. So you're going to be decreasing your cravings for those foods in the, per- in the first place. And hopefully, if you're eating nutrient-dense foods, you can build up your body's nutrients, which some of our cravings are tied to nutrient deficiencies. So hopefully, you can reduce your cravings for certain foods that are tied to nutrient deficiencies. But that's more of a long-term thing. Within a couple months, you would absolutely notice that your desires for certain sugary foods and snacks and processed goodies is going to go down. But yet, you're still able to get the sweetness. You're still able to get the sweet foods. And the thing is, too, in the beginning... You might find that some of these foods, some of these snacks aren't as sweet as you want them to be. But the beauty of it is, the longer you do this diet, your your taste buds change a little bit. Your your palate gets more adapted to less sugar. And literally, there's people who eat dark chocolate bars on keto, like 80 to 90 to 100% dark chocolate. And I know for me, 90% dark chocolate tastes a lot sweeter than I remember it. I remember as a kid, dark chocolate tasted bitter. I remember even the last years before when I was a teenager before I was doing keto seriously it was like dark chocolate tasted bitter and now it tastes sweet to me so your taste buds will change over time at the same time your cravings are dropping at the same times you're still able to satisfy those cravings so that is another gist and probably the most practical one that makes me do keto for fat loss so I'm gonna wrap the video up here but hopefully this gave you some insight into why I do keto it's very beneficial and healthy if you do it right and you're not eating trash but that also goes for any diet but i stand by keto i love the diet and it's something i'm passionate about and i'd love to help you in any way that you would need so ask me a question leave me a comment i'll get back to you i get back to every single person and besides that thank you for watching my name is anthony romano peace